perhaps it should start with just mentioning that uh, traditional or animist Nordic cosmos is relational. The world was perceived as relational. Mm. One of the, the strongest uh, images of the world is the, the world as a tree, the world tree. So the world is this sort of interconnect. And, and when, when you read the descriptions of the tree, then there's different strange strangely named animals all over the tree and and there are animals moving up and down and, and different sort of um so so there's this image of the tree as the as the what do you say the the relational hub of reality somehow and then um so that's sort of the what do you say the starting point perhaps that that there's a very related very connected very interconnected uh, way of perceiving the world, uh, the uh, the animist one, and then um, the um, in this amazing poem, and it's really an amazing poem. It's really difficult to understand, but um, one of the most inspiring teachers I've ever had was uh, Professor Jens Bango, and he like bombastically stated that there are those who regard this poem as the finest piece of poetry ever made. Well, I mean, <laughs> of course, it, 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 people have different meanings about that, but the poem is called the Volspa, uh, and which means the prophecy of the, the vulva, meaning a kind of a female Sharon or something like that. And the, the vulva is uh, prophesying the collapse of the ordered world where the world tree burns and the earth is scorched by you know, trolls of fire that, uh, and uh, the sun is eaten by the wolf that's set free and so on. Um, this, this Nordic cosmos, the relational cosmos, is also one where, where there's a very tight connection between uh, chaotic forces uh, and the ordered world. Mm. It is as if the, the just below the surface of the ordered, harmonious, well-functioned world, there's, there are these wild and potentially very dangerous forces. Um, one myth tell about a, a giant millstone that's driven by these giant troll women, and it produces all the wealth and happiness of of uh, a, a kingdom. And then when, when uh, the king presses them too hard to make him richer, he becomes greedy, then they start uh, cursing him instead of uh, blessing him. So these forces in, in the big millstone that sort of grinds the, the harmonious working of the world, uh, when that breaks down, then there's just like blood and spears and burning holes and uh, horrible things start to happen, mm -hmm. social breakdown. Um, but I got a little bit off track here. The, the, um, the Volospa, the, uh, the prophecy of the Volva, is interesting partly because it has emerged at a point of time where there actually were, uh, people actually had a really close experience of very radical climate disruption. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this is interesting because I, I, I listened on YouTube actually to this uh, American philosopher called uh, Kyle White. He comes from um, uh, people called uh, Poto Watumi. And uh, he talks about how these people, they've experienced uh, climate change uh, because, because they've been moved into different places. And then they've been sort of, um, so they have actually experienced like really catastrophic things being moved from, Ah, oh, sorry, uh, my North American geography. Um, <laughs> is it like Min Minnesota-ish? It's it's a, it's a it's a bottom part of the Great Lakes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then they got moved from there and down to Oklahoma, where it's really dry mm -hmm. and uh, and and arid. Uh, and and these people experienced that as a climate catastrophe. Mm. Uh, and and in a similar way, no, not in a similar way, <laughs> uh, but in 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 a different way. Actually, Northern Europeans had this really radical experiences of climate disruption, which is then communicated uh, or kind of layered in traditional knowledge, or what is perhaps analyzed in traditional knowledge through the world spell. And these, um, in historical terms, the the exact uh, or the concrete. Uh, Things that happened was that in the sixth century, uh, there was a uh, some volcanic ac activity that created a global cooling, and this global cooling hit Northern Europe qu 
quite hard. So uh, the people must have probably experienced that through a period of years. It basically didn't really become summer. And the archaeologists can see that and they can see there's a steep decline in human uh, activity. In some areas, it's like 90% of human uh, activity just disappears. Mm. And, and I mean, if we imagine for a moment the, the sort of existential reality that must be behind this, it must have been, I mean, atrocious. Mm-hmm. Uh, there must have mm-hmm. been probably like, I don't know, wars and um, migrations and all kinds of stuff. I think it actually coincides with the migration period. But this is the period that comes immediately before the period where uh, this poem was uh, composed. Mm. And we know the co- com- the uh, poem from, uh, or the prophecy from Iceland. And the Scandinavians who moved to Iceland, they also experienced a radically changed environment because uh, and they, they actually experienced the, the fairly shortly after these sort of medieval um, Iron Age people came to Iceland, they experienced the most violent volcanic eruption in the history of Iceland, the uh, so-called Ildgja eruption. Um, so, so there are these very um, intense environmental catastrophes that are sort of in the immediate uh, historical context of the emergence of this uh, this apocalyptic poem, um, and and of course it's not only about the memory of these sort of concrete environmental uh, cataclysms. Almost, it's all there are also social things in it because this this period where the um, where the uh, uh, poem emerged is uh, sometimes called the Viking Age, and uh, and Viking Age itself has been sort of what do you say, lauded in nationalism and so mm-hmm, on, and made, mm-hmm. made into this very iconic thing and iconic of whiteness and aggression and all these sort of things. But uh, what people don't n- normally don't talk about when it comes to the Viking Age is that it, for, e- for Scandinavians, not only for the people that Scandinavians landed upon in the Viking Age, but also for Scandinavians themselves. The Viking Age had a pretty kind of hard cocktail of social changes. Mm. There, there was uh, urbanization. There was the first state formation. There was um, monarchies emerged, emerged um, mm-hmm. and Christianization. And what sometimes happened... So, and this is a lot of pretty hardcore changes. Um, and when, what often happens when traditional societies uh, experience radical change is that these sort of apocalyptic um, tendencies uh, sort of uh, emerge. And this is often seen in, in colonized peoples that, that um, when they're colonized and an exterior force come and destroys their life world, then these apocalyptic visions sometimes start to emerge. Um, mm. An example from North America is what is called the ghost dance uh, of the uh, um, Native Americans in uh, the central part of North America. I think they had a um, pro- prophet called Bubokar or something like that, and a lot of them were massacred at some point but they had this idea they, their world had been destroyed and so they they, uh, they got together and they um, I think they had uh, trance dancing and they were sort of praying for the return of, of uh, a golden age mm-hmm. um, and and this kind of religiosity this millinerism is visible I think in the Volospa so this prophecy is uh, kind of a prophecy that unites, I think, the the um, sensation that uh, traditional culture has been ruptured or is going through some radical changes with the experience that uh, that uh, in the environment environment is just going bananas. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and and perhaps there's a sense that these two things are linked. We lose rupture, or, or we lose our relation. We we rupture from the world somehow, and then it breaks up. Mm-hmm. As this king, who 
he got greedy and then he started pressing these, you know, forces of nature too hard and then they revenge themselves. They grow bad and they revenge themselves on him. Um, so this kind of, I think this, this is, an, yeah, a piece of traditional knowledge that, that we could uh, really learn from. 